Hello and welcome on this video offered by Tisto Media where we're going to talk about VIT PWA. My name is Simone Cuomo and today we're gonna install and manage our VIT application using a plugin called PWA VIT plugin. If you're completely new to PWA, a little reading will probably help and I'm not going in real details of what PWA is. In a very small summary, if I have to give you one, is that PWA allow you to install and use your application offline. So I have a very simple VIT uh, application here. If we go on um, add the network tag here and press offline, and if we refresh, you see that my application breaks. No internet, no application. This actually is fixed with PWA because it allows the browser to download the application and be used offline. Um, I have a, a very basic uh, VIT application here. There's nothing special, and that's the one that I was running now in the browser. To install VIT for PWA, we do the following. First, we stop our dev server. Uh, this can actually be installed to any existing project. It doesn't have to be installed on a brand new project, so that's why it's uh, a good one to actually install and implement so that your application can share more usage. So we do npm install dash div because it's a dev dependencies and then vit plugin dash pwa. So we install the dependencies and then we go on the vit config file. This is the vit config that you should actually see in front of you. Uh, what we do, we import the new plugin like so. So vit dash plugin dash pwa, vit pwa. And then we add the plugin within the list of vit plugins. So we just go down here put a comma, and then we just add the plugin here. Don't worry too much about this for now, we'll cover this later, but if we save the application and run our dev server and go back to our Chrome, if I refresh the page, nothing changes majorly, everything is the same. Now, even if I press online, offline, the application is still gonna break. There is an important notion with, um, um, with PWA is that PWAs just work on a server, but more important, just works on under HTTPS. So for us to be able to uh, use our newly installed um, plugin, we need to define a server. So I'm using a, um, a server called uh, uh, HTTP-localhost. So so let me open it up so I can put it in thing. HTTP hosts. So I'm using this one to actually run my server. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the show note as well so that you can access it. But the idea is that it allows you to run the application within a server. So if I stop this and actually set and run npm run dev around npm run serve, You'll see that it will try to serve. To, to it will create a um, it create a server and the port four four three three within the this folder. So I'm actually gonna do before I'll do that. We need to build our application. So we build it, go in the dist, and now I can actually run serve. And if we go back to here and actually change it to four four three three, you see that the same application. Nothing nothing seems to change but it's a very important change. If we go in application here and we click on service worker, we see that there's some service worker has been installed. So that means that our application now is ready to be used offline. So if I click on offline and I refresh, you see that it works. This doesn't work and we'll actually, I can show you why, uh, but most of the application works and actually you're able to do everything. So this is completely offline, it's not using anything. Just to show you even further, if I go here and refresh the page, you can see that most of the requests, so the JavaScript file, the CSS, have been handled by our service worker. What is nice is that the only thing you have to do is load the plugin. So the plugin can do most of this behind the scene with absolutely zero configuration. If we open up our service worker by clicking it here, sorry, I got a little problem. If we open up the service worker by clicking, you'll see that, um, you know, of course, it's not straightforward to read, but if you scroll down, you see all the resources that are prefetched. So we got our CSS, our JavaScript, our index, our service worker, and our manifest. So what, what prefetch me if prefetched means is that the info, the browser knows that these documents, these JavaScript need to be downloaded. And 
if the application is loading and is offline, it will know how to fetch them from the cache, therefore providing you the application offline. If um, what you'd notice um, if you ever used PWA before is that um, you would expect a little um, a little uh, button on the very top to allow to inform you that the application is ready to be installed because the PWA can actually be installed locally. Uh, this is currently not happening because if we go here and click on our manifest, you can see there is a few errors on our manifest. And the most important one is that we don't actually have, um, uh, I can't speak enough for the operating system that I'm using. So if you probably run this on a mobile phone, you'll probably install, but I don't have anything actually for a, um, you know, for, a, I don't have anything that, um, that is actually good for, for the Mac that I'm actually currently using. So what we need to do, we easily just go back on our app and we go back to our with config. Now the with config here as the register service, you know, it just has, um, okay. So it has one entry here, but we're able to add more information. And these are the essential information required for our manifest file. So if we go in uh, the with PWA and we go to getting started, uh, you see that there is information here, but the one that we're going to focus is PWA minimal requirements. So minimal requirements is what really is needed for us to uh, download our app. And if you scroll down, it shows you which one would be the minimal requirement for um, your config. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste them. Uh, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to Where's it gone? Yeah. And I'm going to paste them here within the with PWA config. So you see, we've got a manifest, we got a name, a short name, description, the theme color that is what is used on the, um, the main, um, um, the main icon on mobile phone and icons. Now these icons, we don't have the icons as of yet. So what we're going to do, we're going to go, and uh, going to favicfalcon.com in browse app. So if you actually go to the PWA documentation and you scroll down, you see that there is some resources for you to create icons. So uh, we can go here, we can upload, upload the images. Uh, you can do all the changes. You can see it shows you a little preview of how things will actually go. And you can then click here to download your assets. So I've done this already. So I'm going to copy the assets So just to show you, I notice I'm on the other screen. So I got it downloaded here. So I'm gonna copy them all, uh, go on our, within our application. I'm looking for it. Here we are. Okay, go in our application, go in public and paste them there. Okay, so these are gonna be our icons there. What you do realize if we go back to our code is that uh, now in public we'll have all the information here and that's fantastic, but we also have a site.web manifest. This is the one that the service work is creating for us. So we don't really need this as per se. The only thing we do need is the images. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy the icons and then I'm gonna remove this fine co file completely. Then I'm gonna go back here and just paste the icon. So in a nutshell, you have to define some icons. You can use all the resources that are available in the PWA um, documentation. If I now go back on our, um, unfortunately, because it's a service running, there's not hot, uh, hot reload. So you have to actually um, build the application over time. So as you notice, it changes new things. It generates a new, um, um, sorry, the, the VIT, which generates the new files and then the PWA uh, generates the, the service worker that is necessary. So if we go back here now, uh, we can go back to our application. I can refresh. And what you'll notice is that this is not changed. Why is it not changed? Well, the service worker is here. Uh, service worker has been updated. Okay, now it has been updated. That's good. And the information are provided. So if you go in the manifest, you see that we have our information, name, short name, description, and anything else. 
but and, and, and icons down here. More importantly, we have a little tab over here. So if I go here now, you can see that I can install my awesome app. If I click install, that will actually be installed on my machine. And what you see here is that the app now can actually run as a, as a real app. It looks like a real app is on my desktop, is, is an application. So this is really what can be done with just a few, um, a few steps. And that's, I think that's fantastic for a PW perspective. Um, the only thing that I will probably say is um, you have probably realized that um, after we change and we build the application automatically uploaded, updated. What that means is that the service worker, the new service worker took over the old service worker and all the JavaScript file were um, saved. This is not um, the best way because it can be very dangerous for your real application. Imagine somebody is actually watching, uh, is uh, filling up a form, you upload the site and actually everything changes. So usually what is suggested is to actually have a pop-up that asks the user to refresh and updates the application. And we're gonna do that in a later video. Now, what have we learned? Little recap. Uh, you can install your uh, PWA using the vit dash plugin dash PWA. This accepts information such as the manifest that is really important to be able to download the application. Then the, uh, the vit dash PWA plugin automatically generates all the information that it needs. So it checks your build file and it sees all the, all the files that should be prefetched. What that means is that allow your application to run offline with the file that get prefetched. Unfortunately, to do this as, as currently, you have to run the application, so you have to build your Vite application, and then you have to run a server on the side. The server needs to be HTTPS for the Vite, uh, for the service worker to actually be working. As of now, we're using the register type auto update. So every time the service worker changes, the file will be automatically updated, but this can also be changed with different iteration. I do suggest you to actually go on the main documentation of the PWA. Yeah. So go to vit-pwa-org dot dot app uh, that gives a lot of information on how to get started, what is a service worker, how to use it, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more video on this topic. This program is presented by This.Labs, the framework agnostic consulting firm helping enterprises realize their technical goals through staff augmentation, consulting, project management, on-demand subject experts, training, and other professional services. Find out more at this.labs.com.